the goal. It could be too far. No, he's thinking. Oh, what a catch! It puts a spicy forehand out in front of Naomi Morsilla. Home for the win in Canada. Darren Blue! Santos with the layout grab. Oh, that fantastic grab. The claws of Chapa. Canada just became the world champion. Yo, Canada and the rest of the world, you are listening to the Huck and Abe podcast, your coast-to-coast guide to all things Canadian Ultimate. And I'm your host, Danny, flying solo tonight. I think that this is a rarity. I think there's only been one other time that I've been able to grace your podcast inboxes without my fellow sidekick, Theo. Um, I am joined, however, by my two dogs who are currently wrestling on the bed. So if you hear them... I apologize, but I just can't stop them from living their best lives. So this is where we're at. So it is a me takeover. It's going to be a brief episode, but we do have a little bit to talk about. Theo is very busy right now. It's playoff season. Work is a little crazy. Just need a little bit of time off. So I'm here to fill in about Stanford Invite and Masters announcements. So quick news. We now have breaking news. The U20 teams, the mixed team, the open team, the women's team have announced a fundraiser, a jersey fundraiser. So basically you can get your name on the back of their jersey. Sorry about my dogs. You can get your name on the back of their jerseys by donating a minimum of $25. And it's a really cool way to support the teams so that when they're wearing these jerseys, they have like blank family or like when I had uh, the U24 team, I had my dog donate. And so my dog's name was on the back of the jersey, which is pretty cool. So if you're listening to this, donate to those U20 kids. They need it. Our senior national teams will also be doing the same fundraiser. So stay tuned for that. In other news, the Masters rosters were finally dropped. I know these tryouts were in like November and December. And so it feels like an eternity But we finally know who made these rosters and I can tell you they're looking really good. So on the mixed team, it has me. So obviously it's the coolest team ever. So we have some players from Union, from Young and all over the (laughs) all over the country. Sorry, I think my bigger dog is winning the battle if you can't hear, Um, which is very exciting. The women's team has quite a few Stello players. So a lot of already built in chemistry. That team looks fire. And the open team, a lot of still players and some OG Furious George people. From my perspective, there's quite a few people, or at least a few people rather, on these Masters rosters that I think could have cracked a Wuck roster for senior that have just decided to do Masters instead. So expect these teams to do really well at Worlds. So that's the end of the news section. We're keeping it short and sweet. Our main event, I'm going to be breaking down Stanford Invite. We had University of Victoria in attendance as well as University of British Columbia. So I'll see you on the other side. Hey, this is Leanne Campbell from the McGill Ultimate Team, your 2022 Huck and A Div 1 College Women's Player of the Year. And you're listening to the Huck and A Podcast, your coast-to-coast guide for all things Canadian Ultimate. All right, welcome to your main event. As I said, University of Victoria and UBC were in attendance at the Stanford Invite. This tournament is prestigious. I remember back in my day playing at UVic, we never actually got invited. We always went to the open tournament and would play second like every single time. And so we could never actually crack the invite list. So even being able to go to this tournament uh, for a lot of people is an honor. And so I was super excited to coach there for the second year in a row with UBC. But Before the tournament even started, things were dramatic. So all of us Canadian friends start gathering in the airports. I know a lot of the UVic people had already taken their ferry into Vancouver, etc. And we're all getting these notices on our phones saying that the flights are cancelled. So there's like a large, I think the entire UVic team was on this 130 flight. And everybody on that flight got pushed other flights and canceled. And that had the majority of the University of British Columbia team. I don't know why I'm saying the full name. It's so weird. The UBC's team as well was on that flight. I was luckily on an earlier flight, uh, but it basically pushed people to 7 p.m., 8 p.m., 9 p.m., 10 p.m., etc. And the flights just kept getting delayed, delayed, delayed. So by the time UVic finally got in, I also feel like I heard they had issues with their hotel, like the booking not going through or something, or or they were at a hotel and there's cockroaches. There was some drama. I don't know what it is, 
And by the time they finally got settled in, it was probably closer to 3 a.m. And they had to play at the 8 a.m. round. So I'm not making excuses, but I'm saying after a long travel day, especially coming from Vancouver Island to get to Stanford on a, only a couple hours of sleep to play three games of Frisbee, that's an uphill battle. So the University of Victoria played Washington, a familiar foe and friend from the Northwest, and they ended up losing that game 7-10. to 10. We were watching a bit of this game because we were kind of doing our warm-up beside their field, and every time they play UW, they're always like inches away from getting breaks, from like holding. It looks like these two teams are really evenly matched, and right now UW just has an edge on them in terms of being able to win these games. But from what we know last year, UVic has this, maybe I have this belief in UVic. I hope they have this belief in themselves too, that when it matters, they can pull out a win. They've got they've got the players and the personnel to do it. Uh, so even though they've dropped these games so far this year, I'm hoping that the scoreline and how they feel on the field reflects what it looks like. And it looks like these teams are evenly matched. Then their next game, they played against Stanford and they lost that game by a much larger margin, 2-13. to 13. And Stanford is known for their zones, and it was zone weather. By the time that this round was happening, the wind was fully picking up. It was on and off raining. And Stanford's style of zone is like meant for that wind. So as soon as that weather was turning like it was, I was like, this is Stanford's day. And it was against UVic as well. So the final game that they played that day, they end up playing against Cal Poly Slow. And they dropped that game by two. So a much tighter game but definitely a game that they wanted to win in order to kind of move on. So unfortunately, they were kind of relegated to the not playoff bracket. And so they're kind of in like the consolation rounds. They end up playing California Davis and taking care of business really easily, nine to three. And then they played UCLA and ended up beating them 10 to seven. So they ended up with a couple wins on day two, which is great. Um, Maybe a little bit of sleep helped and i was talking to some people this is why they take a bus friends because the times that they do take flights this kind of crap happens to them so they dropped substantially not only in the power rankings but also in the algorithmic rankings so the predicted bid allocation rankings i think they're they're just holding on to the last one at this moment and they're not the official USAU ranking, so we don't actually know whether that's true or not based on like when teams submit their full roster, some games don't count, BYU might not use their bid, it can drop down, like there's a lot of moving parts plus more tournaments. So hopefully UVic can hold on to that bid. It's nice to have at least four for our region because there's five really strong teams, six if you include BYU if they play. Okay, moving on to UBC. UBC went in as the number one seed and took care of business really nicely on day one. Similar flight issues, nowhere near as bad. I think one of the cars for UBC came in as late as all of UVic, but our our hotel did also just not have confirmation of our booking, so they did not have rooms for us. So the last minute we had to like yeet to another hotel. And I mean, it was all fine. Everyone had good spirits about it, but it did kind of make for a little bit of a hectic travel day. Again, nowhere near as bad as UVix. So we played against Texas first, or sorry, UBC played against Texas first and won that game 13-4. Texas actually surprised me personally. They have a lot of athletes and made a lot of really good plays. I would have expected that game to be more lopsided than it was. And the fact that they were able to get four on UBC is a testament to how much better they've gotten this year. Then 13-1 was the scoreline against UCLA. And then their final matchup of the number two seed in the pool, San Diego. UBC won that game 11-6. And that game was a little bit closer, well, a lot closer than the last time we played. they played San Diego. But San Diego, I don't think, tried to give UBC their best game at Santa Barbara. And today, or sorry, this tournament, they looked a lot stronger. All right, day two, UBC did play against Santa Barbara last year at Nationals, but the game ended up not really mattering. And so it was kind of hard to tell whether we played the real Santa Barbara or not. And I can say that 
on Sunday of this tournament, we got to see the real Santa Barbara and they were cooking. They were really good, huge bids, huge hucks, lots of big skies. They played really, really well. And it was a really fun game to coach in and a really fun game to watch. So if you have not seen this game, it was streamed by Ulti World. You should go check it out. It's an incredible game. UBC did end up winning 12-8, but it was tight for a long time until we kind of like tightened the lines and crossed some people over from O to D. So UBC was then set to face Colorado in semis. And now this is a rematch of the semifinal game from Nationals last year, the heebie ones, where UBC kind of lost themselves under the lights, so to speak. We lost our sense of play, confidence, all of those things. And so it was kind of a big mental hurdle, I believe, for the squad to be able to play this team and still play our game. And uh, UBC took care of business 11 to 8. We were down 5 to 6 in the first half. We held, and then Maddie Ong sniped somebody with a pole again, and then just punched it in for the break to take half. And then the second half took a little bit more control, got a couple more breaks, and then just cruised to an 11 8 victory. That set UBC on a collision course with Vermont, which was the number two seed overall in the tournament. Vermont's big. I swear they're all 5'8 or taller. And they're really athletic. It was something we, we were really excited to see. We had only seen footage of them. They were the other semifinal team. They lost to UNC in semis at nationals. We haven't, I don't think UBC has played them in, in many years. And so it was really exciting to get some exposure with this team. Kind of trading back and forth, a lot of holds. And then UBC was able to sort of chip away and get a couple breaks throughout the game and had the disc on the goal line score 12 to 10, game to 13, and we just couldn't punch it in. We had three, all three of those points where we got broken at the end we had the disc on the goal line to score. And so unfortunately, Vermont just kind of kept making plays and ended up with the surprise come from behind win to win the tournament on Universe. So again, if you haven't seen the Colorado game or you haven't seen the Vermont game, they're excellent games to watch. All the strategy is so different from game to game. So if you are a big fan of watching and learning, you can learn a lot from the different styles of defense, different styles of offense, and also kind of like, what happens to people in pressure moments. So it's a really exciting game. Uh, we learned a lot and we're kind of back to the drawing board about how to attack our end zone in those specific scenarios and and the mental game that is uh, necessary in those moments to succeed. So overall, a really successful weekend for UBC for sure. They're holding on to the number one spot overall in the algorithmic rankings, which is very exciting. And they're going to be looking to try to avenge themselves at the Northwest Challenge. We will see UVic there as well. So that is all short and sweet. We wanted to kind of just give you a quick update while Theo is super busy. Um, and yeah, I just appreciate you all for listening. And for me, it's really fun to listen now that I'm not officially a part of it anymore. But I miss you all. And I hope you have a great day and you go play Frisbee soon. Goodbye.